Hi, I'm Mike. 1.5 million acres of farmland and ranch land are lost in America each year, along with our connection to the American farmer. Who is the American farmer today? Who is the American farmer yesterday? And who will he or she be tomorrow? That's the question today on our Wyoming Life. <laughs> Welcome back, and thanks for joining us as we continue each and every week exploring the ranch life and escaping the ordinary. Please take time to subscribe, like this video, hit the bell notification so you're reminded when a new video comes out every Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday. Aaron and I are not natives to ranching or farming. We both came here to help family and our ailing stepfather Gilbert, who passed away not long after we started here leaving us with thousands of acres to figure out how to manage and hopefully make successful in order to pass along not only a job, but a tradition and a way of life to our kids. Maya Angelou said that if you don't know where you've come from, you don't know where you're going. And I'd like to expand on that by saying, if you don't know where you came from, then you don't know where you are or know where you're going. And if you don't know where you're going, you're probably not going the right way. Today we get a chance to look at the American farmer of the past, the roots of agriculture in the U.S., as well as where we are today, and the changes that have happened over the past 200 years. We're also going to take a peek into the future and what the future American farmer may look like and how agriculture is changing and how people are changing with it. There's a thing in the U.S. called the Census of Agriculture. It was taken first in 1840 and now occurs every year that ends with a two or a seven for some weird reason. The 2017 Census of Agriculture is still being compiled, but it's in starting in April of 2019, they started releasing some data from it. We'll be taking a look at that, but first we're gonna go back uh, to the very first census and take a look at who the American farmer was then. In 1840, when the first census was taken and when it was released in 1841, only took a year to put together back then, it was a document that was 572 pages long and it chronicled almost every county in the U.S. at that time. The goal was to track new population, the wealth and the resources of the country as it pertained to agriculture, including mines, forests production, and fisheries. The basic findings were that 69% of the population in the U.S. was employed in some sort of agricultural practice. The average farm owner was between the age of 30 and 50. And the main products of the nation's agricultural industries being corn, followed by potatoes, and then oats. By the 1850s, after the California Gold Rush, the frontier extended to the Pacific Coast. And with the influx of population resulting from the potato famine in Ireland in 1845 and the German Revolution of 1848, farmers who had only previously grown enough food to feed three to five people on average were now expected to produce more and more and do it faster and faster. With expansion across North America by 1866, the cattle boom accelerated settlement of the Great Plains and range wars developed between farmers and ranchers. By the year 1900, only 60 years after the very first census of agriculture, the percentage of population that was employed by the agricultural industry had been cut in half to 38%. Less farmers were expected to produce more food. And by that time, each farmer had to feed almost 50 people. Farm sizes had also reduced to an average size of just under 150 acres from over 200 just a few years before. The American farmer was also getting older. With more children leaving the ranch and the farms to find places of employment, along with the beginning of two world wars, farming was due for some big changes. With the onset of World War I, production was increased not only in factories, but farms as well, as American farmers were almost entirely sustaining the Allied effort when it came to food. 
Unfortunately, by the 20s, this overproduction created more goods and food than people could afford to buy, leading to the Great Depression. This was combated in 1933 by the Agricultural Adjustment Act, which encouraged those that were still left in farming to produce and grow fewer crops in order to increase prices and benefit producers. In 1933 alone, more than $100 million was paid to cotton farmers to plow under their crops, and millions of pigs were purchased and slaughtered by the government to feed the unemployed. The Agricultural Adjustment Act was found unconstitutional in 1936, but by then, the damage had been done. Many farmers, including three million sharecroppers who did not own their land, found themselves without land or farm jobs to work. By 1934, another 350,000 farmers fled the Midwest due to dust storms. By 1940, only 100 years after the first census of agriculture, the U.S. population had grown from 17 million to 131 million, and the number of farmers in the U.S. continued to fall to only 18% of the labor force. By the 1950s, the government they started to see a problem developing it when it came to food versus those that produce it, and they began legislation to keep land in farming. From 1950 to 1970, the number of farms declined by half as more farms were consolidated or sold off than during any other period in history. The number of farmers dropped from 20 million or 12% of the workforce in 1950 to 9 million, less than 5% in 1970. And during that same period, farm size was increased from around 205 acres to 400 acres as farms consolidated and production increased, producing food at cheaper cost to consumers. Specialization became the mantra of many farms. Larger farms had to specialize in a few cash crops. In 1900, almost all farms, over 95% had chickens, 80% grew corn, 80% had a milk cow, and over 75% had pigs. Farms back then were diversified. Now with specialization, only 4% of farms had chickens, 8% had milk cows, 10% had pigs, and 25% were growing corn. By the 1980s, the labor force working in farming was down to less than 4%. And for the first time in American history, European and Japanese companies began to purchase significant acreages of farmland and ranch land. The average age of a farmer in the U.S. is now continuing to grow at over 50 years old. And farmland begins to disappear at an alarming rate. By the 1990s, nearly 15 million acres of farmland has been lost. And between 1992 to 2012, another 31 million acres were lost. The equivalent of all the farmland in Iowa. 59% of that to urban development and 41% of that on low density residential development or the building of houses on parcels between one to 20 acres. Now with the first stages of the release of the new census of agriculture, we can start to get a glimpse at our current trend. The number of farms has continued to drop in the last five years with another 14 million acres being removed. The average farm size has continued to grow, now up to almost 450 acres, and the average market value per acre is almost $3,000 as compared to $627 only 30 years ago. Corn for grain still monopolizes the main product produced, but the number of farms producing it has decreased by 12%. The number of cattle farms has decreased to the lowest number it has been in the last 30 years, although the number of cattle has increased from 89 million in 2012 to almost 94 million in the newest survey. The average age of your local farmer is now almost 60 years old, and those farmers make up less than 2% of our population. So who is the American farmer? Well, that's changing. The total number of minority farmers grew by almost 100,000 or 7% since the last study. Of those, 22% are Asian, more than a third of those of Asian descent being based in California. The number of Hispanic farmers is also on the rise, increasing by more than 20% as well. 
And although mega farms are out there and gaining ground, 75% of all American farms gross less than $50,000 in the last year. And just over half of the 2% of farmers in the U.S. have reported that farming is their secondary occupation. And now, women account for more than 30% of farm operators in the U.S., a number which has tripled in the last three decades. They're also on the forefront of sustainable agriculture, including the push to bring back diversification in crops and livestock. They're also a lot younger, the average being about 40 years old. Women operators also sold more than $15 billion in agricultural products, according to the latest survey, including $7 billion in crop sales and $6 billion in livestock. The United States has less farms than it did yesterday, and we're losing an average of three acres of farmable ground per minute. And along with all that land goes the farmers. When we came here, there was only cattle. We have added pigs, gardens, chickens, three kids, and we're finishing steers and pigs for local consumption. And we also sell thousands of pounds of produce per year. So who is the American farmer? Well, it's people just like us. American agriculture is what it is because of the small family farms. Those farms are disappearing at an alarming rate. In the future, the American farmer, well, could be this guy. Farmland, along with farmers, are irreplaceable. But you can make a difference. Become a proponent of agriculture. Watch and learn as much as you can. Meet your local farmer. Maybe start a garden yourself. Or better yet, leave a comment below how you're a supporter of agriculture. Subscribe to our channel, come explore the ranch life with us, and escape the ordinary. This week, we hit the ground running once again as we bring all the cows in and their calves, so a little sorting and a little branding is in order. We're also gonna get you involved as we live stream the entire process from sunup to beer 30. We'll see you again soon, and until then, have a great week, and thanks for joining us in our Wyoming life.